Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the movie. 1990 was the year. Steve Barron was the director. A movie would rock the world and change my life forever. TMNT 1990 is my number one pick for on-screen versions of the Ninja Turtles. I've talked about the designs of the turtles in the past in previous videos, and it's no secret that to me, I believe the look of the turtles had a huge impact into why this movie was so successful. But along with that iconic look, this movie is also filled with a ton of memorable scenes and moments. There's all the moments where Raph repeatedly says, damn. God. which coming off the cartoon that was pretty crazy at least back then to the moment where master tatsu almost killed that foot soldier now the scenes i'm about to list off are my personal picks to what i believe are the 10 best scenes in the iconic 1990 film teenage mutant ninja turtles you may have some different picks, so feel free to let me know down below in the comment section what is your favorite scene in the movie. Now, we're about to get started, so settle in, grab a slice, and let's look at the top 10 best scenes from the 1990 film Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Leonardo, meanwhile, has kept a constant vigil with Raphael. Now, to give you some context, Raph got jumped by the foot at this point, and these shots of Leo sitting, waiting for his brother, who he had been fighting with the entire film to wake up, are pretty stunning. Raph laying in the tub, unconscious, looks pretty great aesthetically. April dripping water on his back, Leo chilling with his weapon belt removed. It's a very human scene for these turtles, and the embrace Raph and Leo give each other when he wakes up. It's truly a Kodak moment and brings the team back together as four. This scene is my number 10. Let's take a look at number nine. What is it? It's time to go back. A Jose can say go back. Tell me you didn't pay money for this. Ooh. The introduction of Casey Jones, the idea of Casey Jones hanging out in a tree waiting for a purse snatching to take place is pretty great. And that's how he's introduced in the movie. He comes down like a bat out of hell and his look is fantastic. They got it perfect. This scene is very iconic and he and Raphael are perfect as they go at it. How about a five minute game misconduct for roughing, pal? Hey, what are you, some sort of punker? Huh? There are so many memorable lines in this scene. It gets so heated that the perps end up getting away. This iconic look of Raph in the trench coat always took me back to the 87 cartoon and the toy line that was out at the time. I always thought it was a cool nod to those versions. At least I hoped it was as a kid. But this scene ends with Raphael getting cracked and falling into a trash can and Casey gets away. Genuinely a memorable scene. That's number nine. What's number eight? Stupid one sale, pal. Hey, what are you, some sort of punker? Huh? Oh, a fellow chucker, eh? Michelangelo's nunchuck duel. As a kid, this was always one of my favorite scenes, and rightfully so, it's pretty great. The turtles are fighting the foot in April's apartment when a foot member catches Michelangelo's eye. They start the duel off, and I always thought Mikey's face looked pretty funny in this scene. They definitely used a different head. I want to say they had heads for when they spoke and when they were in action, and this could be like an action one, but I could be wrong. This unforgettable scene is capped off with Mikey spinning the chucks by the chain on the tip of his finger, kind of like a basketball, defying the laws of physics, causing the foot to get mad and start fighting the turtles. It breaks off into this larger fight scene at April's, and it's pretty great, and I'll probably touch on it on another video, but that's my number eight, the Michelangelo nunchuck duel. Let's move on to number seven. Regular or mental? The introduction to the Foot Clan headquarters is one of my favorite parts of this movie. It's one of those scenes that's just so ingrained into my mind. The way the music hits when the scene starts. My body, my body. 
the grunginess to the set, the chaos of it all. Kids are smoking cigars and gambling. Every parent's worst nightmare all in one location. Some older kids are fulfilling online orders. It's kind of like an Amazon fulfillment center of sorts. Sam Rockwell can be seen walking about giving new members tours. As a kid, I wanted to be there so badly. It just looks so awesome. Executed perfectly in my opinion. One of those scenes that's just so unforgettable. All right, what's number six? Gosh, I do hope there's more of them. <laughs> the fight in the turtle den. This scene is kind of underrated in my opinion. It comes towards the tail end of the film. I don't see it pop up too often in discussions. The turtles are finally back together in the den and the foot thinks they're going to creep up on them but the turtles handle business. Some of the best action bits are in this scene. Leo doing flips and beating the crap out of foot soldiers. Donatello flying kick from out of frame roundhousing some fool. The film score starts to get really good at this point. I mean it's great throughout the entire thing but it starts to ramp up at this point and it's pretty terrific. Michelangelo and April coordinating together to take out a foot soldier. Donatello skateboarding down the the sewers while hitting foot soldiers with his bow staff. There's so many little nuggets in this scene that are just perfect. How you doing? Hi. Nice night. Mm-hmm. Pizza dude's got 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. Michelangelo and Donatello waiting for the pizza guy. This is one of the few scenes I remember seeing on the big screen. I want to say it just may be the most quoted scene of the film. This is such a great shot of the two. Up until this point in the movie, you would see the turtles, but in this scene, the lighting, the close-up, it was truly like we were seeing the cartoon we all knew and loved come to life in front of our eyes. They were perfect. The delivery guy looking for the address and Michelangelo going back and forth is fantastic. The way the set is dressed up above on the street level is so lived in. Everything has character. The buildings, the floor, it's perfect. It's one of those scenes that just sticks with you. Ah, come on, I couldn't find a place. You are here because the outside world rejects you. This is your family. I am your father. The introduction to the Shredder is so boss. But let me take it back. So a kid just got his ass kicked for lowering his eyes to an enemy. When we hear the call for everyone to go meet with the Shredder. His entrance is legendary. They roll out a carpet for him and everything. I'm pretty sure there's a scene that didn't make the final cut that shows him sitting down on the floor and kicking some foot soldier ass because he can. I almost wish they would have left it in. But this movie, to me, is so perfect that I wouldn't want to mess with it, to be honest. The look of his cape as Master Tatsu is rolling it back always looked so soothing, like, like how those videos of people cutting Play-Doh makes you feel. That texture is on point, and then the reveal of the spikes on his suit, man, what a perfect execution when it comes to the look of the Shredder. I wouldn't change a thing. They changed it up for part two, and it's not that great in my opinion. We'll get to it some other day. His speech is moving. The music is perfect. What a cool scene. A work of art, people, I'm telling you. We're getting down to the final three. Let's have a look at what they are. We were awesome. The opening celebration. The turtles just beat up some criminals and left without a trace, except Raph. Anyways, the team can be heard coming around the corner and this is as the film is starting. We haven't seen the turtles yet, at least at the time. The music is pumping up. You can see their shadows. The iconic logo comes across the screen. And this is when we got our first look at the turtles. Every time I rewatch this movie, this scene gives me chill still. The banter back and forth is so natural. The voices all blend together perfect like musical instruments. It's beautiful. Raph in the background sulking is just the cherry on top. Man, look at Leo's expression when he's looking at Mikey while Donnie's trying to come up with a cool word to say. The way they were able to perform expressions on these animatronics is just out of this world. What a scene. One for the books. That's number three. Let's check out number two. Oh, man. Right. You fight well in the old style, but you've caused me enough trouble. 
Now you face the Shredder. The final fight with the Shredder is gorgeous. The turtles are still trying to be lighthearted in the beginning. The Shredder? <laughs> uh, maybe all that hardware is for making coleslaw. But soon realize they're in over their head. One on one each turtle tries to take him on, unsuccessfully. It's so intimate and quiet too. Truly a thing of beauty. Not screaming all up in your face. It's slow and methodical in its approach. One turtle up at a time. The turtles regroup as they realize they're slowly starting to lose the fight. But Leah doesn't give a crap because this guy knows where Splinter is. I've only got one thought. This guy knows where Splinter is. They all charge at him together. And these are the best fight scenes for me in the movie. The lighting, the framing, the moves they're pulling off in the turtle suits. The score of the movie is starting to crescendo. I didn't mention it earlier, but you can tell Shredder is serious because he removed his cape. Each turtle tries, but fails. Except for Leonardo, he gets a hit in, which I thought was a nice touch, him being the leader and all. It's a nice subtle detail that he's just a smidge above his brothers, but still not good enough to defeat the Shredder. Although Raph shows he can be a leader a bit too when the turtles are on the ropes, he tries to get to the root of the problem when all the chaos is going on front and center, asking the Shredder straight up, man the turtle. Where's Splinter? I love this part. As a little kid, I was like, damn, Raphael is stepping up. But this is when Shredder mentally breaks down Leonardo though and draws him into his trap. I love this final fight. I feel like they could have done so much more with this movie franchise. The second movie is all right, but with what this movie did, they could have done so much more with the sequels. But maybe that's what makes it special that there's only one. Anyways, number one isn't a scene probably that you're thinking of. It's just a small scene between two characters, low light, and no action. Here it is. Raphael, come sit by me. Couldn't this wait till morning? You will listen now. My master Yoshi first rule was possess the right thinking only then can one receive the gifts of strength knowledge and peace I have tried to channel your anger Raphael but more remains anger clouds the mind Turned inward, it is an unconquerable enemy. You are unique among your brothers, for you choose to face this enemy alone. But as you face it, do not forget them, and do not forget me. I am here. My son. Splinter speaking with Raphael, to me, this scene is stunning. A father and son, a son with a certain way of dealing with things that's different than his brothers. It's a beautiful scene, and I really don't know what else to say. It speaks for itself, which is what makes it so perfect. It's my favorite scene in all of Ninja Turtles. But that's it. That wraps it up for my list of the top 10 best scenes in the 1990 film Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, big question, what's your favorite scene in TMNT 1990. I literally have more than 10 left on the cutting room floor that I wanted to put in this video, but that'll probably do on a follow-up video sometime. There's just so many memorable scenes in this movie. Now let me know down below what's your favorite. 1991 was the year and the Turtles had just come off one of the biggest successes in their franchise's history. The release of their first live action movie. Turtle Mania was riding high, like it was all over the place. It was bananas. It seems like the people behind the movies wanted to strike while the iron was hot, cause it didn't take long after the first movie for Secret of the Ooze to hit theaters. Now, in my opinion, the movie is not even close to being as good as the first one. Not even close. But don't get me wrong, when it comes to live action movies, it's the second best one for me. This movie I've noticed is often the one remembered most by some fans and just general moviegoers, which kind of trips me out because part one was so much better in my opinion. 
like levels above. And I wish that one would kind of get more of the limelight, but for some reason, people seem to remember this one more. It's littered with a ton, just like the first movie, of memorable moments. This is the one people seem to remember more. And we're gonna take a look at why that is. So as we always do, we're gonna dive into the sewers, grab a slice of pizza, and take a look at the 10 most memorable moments in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze. The opening. The opening to this movie is so unforgettable. The in memory to Jim Henson shot, the clips of the city, the catchy music, all the pizza being eaten on every street corner. Man, that pizza always looked so good as a kid. The slices were so big and so cheesy. Even now, only two movies make me crave pizza like this. The opening to Secret of the Ooze and the opening to the original Home Alone. Man, I need some pizza right now. You know, you think finding a new place would be easy, but no. You think even an idiot could find a place down here, but no. The discovery to the new turtle den was pretty memorable and a big moment for these turtles in this original trilogy. It would also play a big part in the third movie as the setting for the B story and would eventually serve as the home to the 1997 turtles, Ninja Turtles The Next Mutation. It's funny though, cause I don't really associate this den with Secret of the Ooze. It feels more Turtles 3 when I remember these movies, but nevertheless, it was introduced in Secret of the Ooze and so it is one of the most memorable parts of this movie. You know, there's still a little more stuff to help with, Michelangelo. Hey, I'm helping Donnie. First, we should observe the ancient ritual of the, uh, the, the traditional pre-fight donut. Yeah. The construction yard meetup, there's not much action in this scene, but the setting and the Foot Clan on the structure around the turtles as the turtles are looking up was always pretty memorable. I like the way the whole sequence is set up. Leo giving the donuts to Toka and Razor, then the ice cube gets revealed with the antidote inside for Toka and Razor. For the longest time as a kid, I had no idea what that was. I always thought it was like one of those novelty ice cubes with like a bug in it. it wasn't until I was older that I realized what was actually going on. But yeah, memorable scene. Let's see the next one. Take the ugly one. No, you take the ugly one. I'll take the ugly one. Oh, which one's the ugly one? Whoa. The last vial of ooze. He must have drank all of it. It's a super shredder. Super Shredder, played by professional wrestler Kevin Nash, was always pretty cool to me as a kid. I loved the design, I dug how menacing he looked. I was always a bit disappointed though in how short his run was. He's only around for a couple minutes and kills himself in an accident, you know, shaking the dock until it breaks. But it was kind of cool while it lasted. Nowhere near as cool as the original movie's version of the Shredder, but pretty memorable all things considered. Had to make it on the list, let's take a look at number six. You have never seen this, but know what it is. <gasps> That's the canister that had the ooze. Oh. That transformed us all. Now, this movie doesn't have as much emotional weight as the first movie. It's not even close, but there is some attempts at it. Splinter explaining to the turtles about TGRI and the canister and how TGRI is now popping up all over the news and stuff was always pretty memorable. It's the closest attempt to catching the feeling of that first movie when it comes to like emotions. Donnie searching for answers to their origin and later only to find out that their origin was all a mistake has a bit of an emotional weight to it. Not that much, but I give him credit for trying. We get you in, we find the foot headquarters, we get you out to tell the others, right? Gee, maybe I should write this down. What? I'm being punished, aren't I? Kino's tryout. So Raph and Kino go off on their own to try to infiltrate the foot and find out their secret location. Some of the best, coolest scenes are in this part. Raph hiding behind the car in broad daylight, Kino participating in some hand-to-hand -hand combat tryouts and coming out on top. But my favorite part is where they have him take the bells off that mannequin under the cloak of like ninja smoke without making a sound. Then Raph comes in and ends up doing it for him. That was always super cool. One of my favorite parts of the film, how to make the list. Let's take a look at number four. What do you say? Let's do it, eh? Let's do it! <laughs>
The fight at TGRI is memorable. Donnie just realized that there's still one canister active of the TGRI ooze. They get ambushed by the foot. And by the way, the way the lab looks is like something out of a sci-fi movie, but it, it kind of works in this movie. I like the lighting in this scene as well. The turtles don't look so bright like they did at the beginning of the movie, and it's a bit closer to how they looked in the first movie, at least when it comes to like their color and their shading. The turtles playing football with the canister, Mikey headbutting the biggest foot soldier in the stomach, Leo using these things instead of his swords. Actually, that last one kind of sucks, but yeah, this scene is riddled with memorable moments. All right, the final three. Yeah. Help! Yeah, yeah, you're gonna need it, kid. What? the turtles introduction to this movie even if i don't enjoy this movie as much as the first movie it's still pretty cool but it gets me pumped up every time this scene starts the turtles jumping over kino the way the music hits so many memorable moments in this scene the turtles which each one of their catchphrases just like the first movie and donnie struggling to find his own also like the first movie. I remember when this scene happened, when I watched it as a kid, it was not like a drive-in, I remember. The kids went bananas when all the turtles landed from their jump. Donatello's clown punching bag moment, Mikey's around the world yo-yo moment, and who could forget the sausage nunchucks, Although the last one kind of sucks because it was the beginning of Mikey not being able to use his nunchucks throughout the movie. But at the same time as a kid, this was super iconic and one of those moments to remember. One for the books. <laughs> and next time I'll use mustard! <laughs> the perimeter's quiet. Yeah, a little too quiet. Mm. <laughs> well, that was easy. Yeah, a little too easy. Yeah. <sighs> Look, huh? it's Raph. Oh, yeah, a little too Raph. You guys, oh, knock it off. Brother. Keep your eyes peeled. The turtles infiltrate the Foot Clan base. This scene is one of the best when it comes to this movie. Some of the best action in the movie takes place in this part of the film. And some funny ones as well. There's the little too Raph part, Donnie taking out two Foot members, Splinter saving the turtles again, and that moment where Donnie rips the tape off Raphael's mouth and Raph starts mouthing off and Donnie puts the tape back on, but it doesn't really go back on Raph's mouth properly. All of these are great, great action. This part as a whole feels a lot more faithful to the original movie when it comes to like action and fun. And I remember it clear as day watching it at that drive-in as a kid. And it was one of those moments that really opened my eyes to how big the Ninja Turtles were. Okay, now this is not my favorite moment of the film, but it is the most memorable. It's arguably the most popular thing people think of when it comes to the Ninja Turtles in general. Every time I bring up any movie from the original trilogy to a casual moviegoer or a family member, the one thing that always comes up is ninja rap. And I might as well just add the club scene. And as the song is actually going on while they're in the club, there's some great action. It's more, at least to me, of a climax to the film than the actual fight with Super Shredder. There's a lot of great action in this scene, although mixed with some goofy dancing. Still a great scene and super memorable. Still though, to this day, I enjoy Turtle Power more than Ninja Rap. But for some reason, Ninja Rap is what's remembered most. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 is a fun movie. Great memories watching it while eating pizza pizza with friends and family. It holds a special place in a lot of turtle fans' heart. It has solidified its place in Ninja Turtle history, and although it does make me a bit sad that it takes some of the limelight from the first film, which in my opinion is a far superior film that is severely underrated. But slowly but surely, I've noticed people are starting to either notice or speak out about that original 1990 movie, the first one. And this is good, as the live action reboot is around the corner, and if the creators notice this as well, maybe we'll get something more in that tone of that original film or we could get those shrek turtles again it was 1993 one really good turtles movie and another okay turtles movie had come out no doubt that both had made a huge impact on pop culture and just the world in general a third movie was inevitable and so it was ninja turtles 3 the final installment in the original 1990s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles trilogy. Some know it as Ninja Turtles 3 Turtles in Time, but back in the day, we only knew it as Ninja Turtles 3. In my opinion, this movie really did the turtles in. That was it. The party was over. Although, looking back on this film, it's incredibly nostalgic and 
at least enjoyable for that reason. Rewatching the movie in preparation for this video, which I had not done in a long time, there were genuine moments where I literally laughed out loud. Although there are some moments where I'm like, what the hell? Very you missed me. But this movie is not as bad as I remember. I think the worst thing about it is the fact that they went with the all effects company for the animatronics rather than the Jim Henson creature shop. Oh, oh no. Oh, How the hell do they look no. like that? What's wrong with them? You can definitely tell that the actors inside the suits move a lot easier. They're doing a whole bunch of new moves that we really didn't see in the first two movies. But the look of the turtles just looked so much different in the original two movies that it really, at least from my point of view, turned off a lot of people when they saw the turtles in this third movie. And in turn, I feel like just left a bad taste in people's mouth when it comes to this movie. So when looking back, it's easy to say, wow, that movie is terrible. And don't get me wrong, it's no masterpiece, but I can only wonder how this movie would have been received if the turtles looked like they looked like in the first or even second movie but with everything else left the same in this movie i wonder how that would have turned out i bet this movie would look a lot less like a blemish on the original trilogy and just be more like eh, the one that's not as good as the others but with all that said this movie is littered with a ton of memorable moments and that's what we're here to talk about today i was debating doing top 10 worst moments, top 10 best moments, but I think we're just gonna stick with top 10 most memorable moments, either good or bad. We're just gonna mix it all up. And stay till the end of the video as we're gonna do a bonus round of sorts at the end. But let's get started with the 10 most memorable moments in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, part three. Walker, you're alive. Yes, I'd say that was a fair assumption. Walker, all the moments with Walker have stuck with me over the years. When watching his performance, at least in my opinion, he seems to be a couple levels above the other actors. He just seems to bring something a little extra. This movie's general tone is pretty cheesy, pretty corny, but I don't know, for some reason, besides his death at the end, which we'll talk about, he seems separated from all this, like he's actually taking this role seriously, and he's a pretty cool villain, but in a bad movie. I don't think he's ever made a reappearance as a villain in different incarnations of the turtle, so I think this was the only one, but at least he got an action figure. Let's take a look at the next one. And go ahead, witch. Big mistake, dude. It's always nice to see Leonardo in a sword fight, and come to think about it, I don't think we got too many sword duels with Leonardo in the original trilogy, so this one in Turtles 3 was always very memorable to me, but the most memorable part about it has to be the part at the end where he cuts off Lord Noriaga's hair. It's one of those scenes that I remember clear as day watching when I was younger, and for the life of me I have no idea why it sticks around with you, but it's no doubt that it's one of the most memorable parts of this movie regardless of how silly and corny it is let's check out the next one it's wet willy time mo wet what em wet willy time we all remember it i didn't even know what a wet willy was when i was a kid until i saw this movie and although the moment is one of the most memorable moments of the movie the character it's happening to niles is also one of the most memorable characters of the movie he is the butt of a lot of the jokes that are probably the more funnier jokes in this movie i just keep birds now little finches shut up niles what's going on captain ignorant superstitious fools we was just wondering them you moronic toad <laughs> i'll save you captain <laughs> hi there you see <laughs> niles what a legend taking all those hits on the chin and still coming back for more an incredibly memorable part about this movie whether you liked it whether you didn't it's no doubt that the character of niles is one of those things that you remember niles The 
presence of April O'Neil in this movie is like a breath of fresh air. Because although the turtles don't look the way they looked like in the previous movies, at least there's April there to kind of connect this movie at least to Secret of the Ooze. It seems like she has a little bit more to do in this movie than Secret of the Ooze, and it works for the most part. The part where her Walkman starts playing music and all the guards start chopping it up with their swords was always super memorable to me. <laughs> Casey Jones brings a similar aspect to this movie that April does. It's just a familiar face that helps me feel invested with this movie since we've seen these characters in previous installments. Although I don't know what they did with his hair. His hair looks way different than it did in the first movie. I don't know if it's like a wig or something because later on in the movie where the same actor plays a different character, that character has shorter hair. So I wonder if they just had him wear a wig for when he played Casey Jones. But regardless to this weird change to Casey's hair, which I know is a weird thing to point out, but I don't know why it bugs me. He does bring a bunch of cool moments to this movie in the B-plot of the movie where Splinter, Casey Jones, and the Honor Guards are back at the lair waiting for the turtles. And I think I've said it before, but it was always weird to me to see this version of Casey with this version of April. Since the last time we saw this version of Casey Jones, April was played by a different actress. I don't know why, it always felt like he was cheating on the other April for some reason. <laughs> okay guys, let's play a little hockey. The next one's really quick and a very small moment, but super memorable. It's that line you just heard there of Donnie saying, help, I'm a turtle and I can't get up, which at the time as a kid, I always thought they were referring to that life call commercial where the like old lady falls down. I've fallen and I can't get up. Well, ain't that some sh I'm pretty sure that's what they were going for when it goes to that line. But yeah, that line was super memorable. Everyone everywhere on the playground used to say that all the time, at least where I was at. A small moment, but incredibly memorable. That's number six. Let's take a look at number seven. Do you really think I'd make it that easy, you nasty little reptiles? Now this one I have seen talked about all over the web, so I'll keep it short. It's when Walker dies at the end. He falls off the side of the wall and into the water, but when it's time for his body to hit, he just disappears. There's no splash or anything. There's the sound effect of a splash, but he's just gone. What a weird climax to a movie. Where the hell did he go? Leonardo and Michelangelo saving Yoshi has a bunch of memorable moments. Mikey rushing into the fire to go in and get Yoshi, but before he goes in, he dunks a big piece of cloth into a bucket of water and throws it over his head before he goes in, which as a kid I thought was the coolest thing. At least back then, that was something I would have never thought of, but after seeing that, even to this day, I have that in the back of my mind in case I ever have to escape a fire or anything. Funny how old little things like that from movies stick with you. There's also Leonardo giving Yoshi CPR after Michelangelo pulls him out, and all the townsfolk think he's casting a spell on him or something. But yeah, this whole sequence has stuck with me over the years, and makes it in the top three. Hey, you were expecting maybe uh, the Adams family? <laughs> Good one. After an entire movie of watching the turtles bumble about in their honor guard gear that looks way too clunky on them, this, what I call the Adams family fight, shows the turtles back off in their regular look. There's little moments in this part that really make me laugh, like Leo's reaction to Donatello telling off Lord Noriaga. Give us a scepter back and... Uh, <laughs> Plus other little moments like the Adams Family line really spice up the scene and make it very unforgettable. Good job, turtles! Yes. Leo, high foot! Hey! The opening to this film is super memorable. 
Sure, the turtles looked a little different, but back in the day when you watched this for the first time, you weren't really sure what you were getting into. All you knew is that the turtles were back and they looked more agile. They were jumping and kicking and doing all this sort of stuff. And it's all displayed in this opening scene. And sure, it all falls apart when Raph irrationally throws his scythe through the speaker for no reason at all. I think he was mad because nobody knows they're alive down there. For what? Uh, nobody appreciates us. Nobody sees us. Nobody even knows we're alive down here! But still, it's no doubt that when I re-watch this movie, this opening shot still makes me feel a bit hyped, even though I know that the rest of the movie goes downhill from here. But that's it. Those are the top 10 most memorable moments in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Part 3. Now, if you remember I said at the beginning, there's going to be like a bonus thing here at the end. We're going to take a look back as I've also covered parts 1 and 2. So let's take a look back and do a recap of all 30 most memorable scenes real quick in the original 1990s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles trilogy. And then one day... I came upon a shattered glass jar and four baby turtles. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to follow me on all the social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. It's a good way to stay in touch with the channel. And also head on over to www.theoldturtleden.com. It's pretty new. We plan on adding more stuff to it in the near future. But yeah, go check it out. Helps keep the lights on here in the Turtle Den. And once again, thanks for watching.